Hey everyone! Welcome back to Financial Futures. And today I've got some exciting news for you regarding SSDI and SSI benefits. We have a major announcement from Social Security that's going to make a big difference for many of you. So, let's dive right in. First off, thank you so much for liking and sharing this video with those buttons right down below. I really appreciate it. And if you're new here or haven't done so yet, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm here for you every single day to keep you updated, break down the headlines, do the research, and advocate on your behalf. It's a tough time out there, and there's a lot happening between now and the end of the year. So, hit that subscribe button and join our community. Alright, let's talk about the big announcement from Social Security. This year has already seen a lot of changes for SSDI and SSI beneficiaries, and we've got yet another great update to add to the list. Social Security has announced that they're making some major improvements to the evaluation process for disability benefits, and this is going to impact a lot of people in a positive way. Now, let's get into the details. If you're a beneficiary or waiting to receive an award letter for SSDI or SSI, you know the process can be long and frustrating. It often involves multiple denials and appeals, and it can take months or even years. But Social Security is making changes to make this process more efficient. One of the biggest changes is the removal of 114 outdated occupations from the Dictionary of Occupational Titles, or DOT. This dictionary is used to determine what types of jobs a person with a disability might still be able to do. Some of the jobs being removed are so outdated and unrealistic that it's laughable. For example, canary breeder, reptile farmer, nut sorter, pneumatic tube operator, and character impersonator these jobs are being eliminated from the list. Yes, you heard that right a nut sorter. Who does that anymore? Machines handle these tasks now. By removing these obsolete jobs, Social Security is acknowledging that they are not realistic options for people with disabilities, which is a huge step forward. For example, I recently read about a case where an electrician who sustained a disability was denied SSDI because it was suggested he could work as a nut sorter. Ridiculous, right? By removing these jobs, the evaluation process becomes more relevant and fair. This change means that when you apply for SSDI or SSI, you won't be judged on whether you can perform these outdated jobs. Instead, the focus will be on more realistic employment options, making it easier for many to get the benefits they deserve. I have to say, Social Security has been making some impressive changes this year. They've been cleaning house and improving the system for beneficiaries. There's still a lot more work to be done but these changes are a great start. So, let me know in the comments what you think about these updates. Are you impacted by these changes? Do you find the process as frustrating as many others do? Let's discuss. And don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe to the channel for more updates. Check out the other videos here on Financial Futures, and stay informed about all the latest news affecting your finances. Now let's move to another topic. Our next topic is housing market crash. Have you been wondering when this so-called housing crash is going to start that we've all been hearing about for so long? Well, if that's the case, you're certainly in the right place because that's exactly what I'm going to talk about right here in this video. Let's get into it and discuss all the details. Now, let me explain exactly what's going on here with this whole housing market crash we've been hearing about for so long. A lot of people are saying, look out, it's about to start. The housing market is going to crash, and there will be amazing deals on real estate. You'll be able to pick up a house for $16 next week. No, I don't think so. But anyway, let me explain exactly what's going on here. Look at the current situation right now with real estate and housing. The market is honestly not doing that great, as in prices are remaining steady. In fact, we just saw a new report that came out the other day showing that the median household price right now across the entire country is $442,000.
that has gone up significantly over the last couple of years, from the low 300s just a couple of years ago. Basically, what's going on with the housing market is a whole lot of nothing. There's some inventory sitting on the market, and a few buyers are out there kicking tires on houses, taking a look at what's going on. We're not seeing this massive crash. Interest rates are oscillating around the 7% range. Sometimes it dips below into the high 6% range, sometimes it goes up into the mid 7% range, but it's been oscillating right around the 7% range for quite a while now. The number of buyers out there right now is relatively limited. In other words, there aren't many people rushing to buy houses, offering $115,000 over asking, or 10% over asking, and needing to get into a house right away with multiple offers. It's just not happening right now. Why? Because buyers have the ultimate upper hand. Sellers are just sitting there, waiting to see what happens, while buyers face these massive interest rates, jacked up because of the Federal Reserve and a variety of other economic factors. Nobody's in a rush to buy houses like what we saw a couple of years ago. So, when is this big crash going to come that we've been hearing about for so long? In my opinion and from what I'm seeing out there, it's not happening. We are not going to see a massive, massive crash in real estate in the housing market anytime soon. Now, it could potentially happen, but let me explain exactly what would need to happen for this market to see a massive, massive crash. It's probably not what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, oh, a major recession, right? No, that's actually not what I'm thinking. In fact, a recession is not going to do anything to the market. There are a couple of different things that could crash this market, but I honestly don't even foresee this happening. Scenario number one, if the Federal Reserve came in and raised interest rates even more. If interest rates on mortgages, like a 30-year fixed-rate mortgage, or even a 15-year, started to see 8.5%, 9.5%, 10%, or higher, you may see buyers come out of the market and just sit on the sidelines. But I highly doubt that's going to happen. Scenario number two, a massive increase in inventory, also known as supply. If we see a huge number of homes hitting the market and jacking up inventory, prices would come down. But I don't foresee this happening either. Most people with mortgages right now are locked in under 5% interest rates, and with rates currently at about 7%, why would they sell their home to rebuy at 7%? It just doesn't make sense. So, what do I foresee happening? I see the market kind of being what it is for now limited buyers, high rates, and supply doing whatever it does. Maybe some price cuts across the board, but for the most part, prices are staying relatively strong. Some sellers are willing to come down a little bit, but it's the same old thing. At some point, the Federal Reserve will start cutting interest rates depending on the health of the economy. If the economy goes down rapidly and we see a massive economic contraction or a massive recession, interest rates will fall very rapidly from the Federal Reserve. If we see the 30-year fixed rate come down to 6%, 5.75%, 5.5%, or even sub-5%, hold on because this thing is going to get wild. It's going to be a seller's market again, with buyers coming out of the woodwork, making offers on everything. So, until then, we just kind of bounce around and do the same old thing. Buyers and sellers are just going to sit back and wait. It's all about affordability at the end of the day. Remember, what buyers really want to know is how much they have to pay every single month for their house. That's what it comes down to. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that for now. Please make sure to like the video, share the video with those buttons down below, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave your comments, questions, and feedback down below. Check out the other videos here on the channel the ones I've hand-selected for you in the description and at the top of the comments section. Until next time, let me know how I can help. Thanks for watching Financial Futures.